transparency is probably one of the most overused and underarticulated words in social media. I mean, we hear it all the time. And I think, you know, you're right to ask for the definition. What is it? How is it used? What does it mean? And I think there are two kinds of transparency. There's forced. Mm -hmm. And we see that in its most extreme form in revolutions, um, places where, you know, governments and others are trying to control the media and they cannot because there are far too many channels. Uh, and then we also see it as voluntary. Mm -hmm. where you know companies have an opportunity to be far more transparent when they're having issues mm -hmm. or problems um, which is actually to their business benefit mm -hmm. and I think that you know um, you know I've been in this business in a while about five years and in the beginning companies would say I'm not going to give the competition all of my information that's I transparency I, I can't do that and of course that's not what it means you know it means it means being transparent about the things that make sense and mm -hmm. make a better experience mm -hmm. How do you conciliate the, the, the necessity of more information, more truth, and on the other end, uh, the necessity to save your privacy inside the company, for instance? Well, I think you pick your battles, for lack of a better term. So one of the ways that companies most often have an opportunity to be very transparent is when they have a crisis. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we see that they're digital first and digital um, digital. Uh, influenced crises, right? So crises, are digital first or digital fueled, think Di of them. Excuse me, digital? Digital first. first. So a crisis that appears online okay, and I must see. be dealt with mostly online and then goes to mainstream media or yeah. a mainstream media crisis, which of course is fueled by digital. And that, that as extensions online. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, there is no part of an online, there's no part of a crisis for a company that doesn't have an online component. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't exist. So um, we see an opportunity around crises to be transparent, you know, to say, you know, someone has a product issue or something's starting to come up, to come, to come out in the open and say, we hear this problem, we hear this issue, uh, we're dealing with it. Even to come out in the first few minutes or, you know, f first 20 minutes, first hour, to be able to come out when you don't have any answers and say, look. We're looking after it. Mm -hmm. We see, we hear, mm -hmm. we're, we're looking into it as soon as into I have, it. yes, exactly. <laughs> as soon as I have some information, I'll come back and I'll, I'll update you. And I think that that is probably uh, the single, in my experience, I have seen that to be the single biggest value, mm -hmm. uh, business value in terms of transparency. Because when you're silent, people always assume the worst. Mm -hmm. You don't care, you don't hear us. Meanwhile, in the background, you may be going crazy trying to come up with the fully formed answer, mm -hmm. which is how we used to do it before. The fully formed answer to provide to the newspaper so that when it is printed on 80,000 copies the next day, you know, is clear and understood and there'll be no big evolution. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that anymore. You can't do that anymore. You come out and you say, you know, we're ready. We're, and, you know, sort of provide transparency, transparency into the crisis process. Mm -hmm. um, we see that being very valuable. Okay. Mm -hmm, cool, and that's a good point of view. And then, uh, just to come back a little bit to conference, um, uh, you uh, you talked about uh, Big Brother today, and you talked about uh, Big Brother being not the government or uh, any uh, obscure force, but being advertisers. First, uh, are we uh, creating our own Big Brother by using those technologies? Mm -hmm. And uh, are the new advertiser maybe a better uh, better persons if they don't sell us dreams and untruths, but if they sell us sell us something more close uh, closer? I mean, mm -hmm. to uh, our, our really needs. In terms of using the platforms, it's too late. Too late. It's We're done. Late. One in three Canadians, at least, that was the last number I saw. And it's probably more by now. One in three Canadians is on Facebook. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna. That's not gonna stop. But, You're they, not do, but they don't print uh, their uh, telephone number and their address, etc. True, they, but they it's behavior, right? It's what okay. color are your the eyes? Behavior. What movie do you like? Mm -hmm. uh, who? What groups are you part of? You know, what what ads did you click on? I mean, it's this whole ecosystem of data that they're able to capture mm -hmm. based on the pictures and you know and the tags and all kinds of things and your social graph so um, there is just a, a ridiculously huge amount of data that that people are able to gather about you and I think the point of my talk was that they're not doing it because they want to watch you as an individual they don't you're not that like we are not that interesting you mm -hmm. know Facebook doesn't want no, to no, monitor no. you no, no. They in aggregate. Aggregate. Correct. So, so to find the tendencies and the, the, the trends. And exactly. And mm -hmm. to target advertising to you most effectively. That mm -hmm. is their revenue model. But they don't know to whom they they'd send this, this ad. G generally speaking, that, I mean, when, mm -hmm. you're, you know, when, when you select an ad, mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously Facebook has the data in terms of who it's going to go to, mm -hmm. but that doesn't, 
as you as an individual advertiser, it doesn't matter. I don't care about the individual. I want to know that I'm going to target this group of people with brown hair who mm-hmm. like this movie, mm-hmm. you know, who read The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. That's mm-hmm. who I want to reach. Mm-hmm. And so when you can reach 100,000 of those people because you know that they're your target, it's extremely valuable. Mm-hmm. And that's how Facebook makes its money. I mean, their revenue model is entirely based on display advertising that's highly targeted. Absolutely. And that's, that's data we have voluntarily given them in order to be sold further um, but, product. But it, it doesn't put us at risk. I don't think it's at risk. Mm-hmm. No, I think the question is, why? Mm-hmm. Why are we giving away something that has so much value in order to give th- more things away, which is our money? Because we take some, uh, some benefit and some value from it. And I guess that's the, it, it's true. We use the service for free. And I guess that's the question. Mm-hmm. You know, with Facebook's valuation in the hundreds of billions of dollars... We're putting a lot more in than we're getting out, Yes, I would argue. But you know what? We did put much, much money also in building Bell Canada. True. And uh, they are still ripping us every month True. for our uh, data. And yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm Roger, so, but same thing. Yeah, yeah. same yeah. thing. Well, they're all using the public infrastructure. Absolutely. Well, and that, that, but that is a principle also, too, of the airwaves, mm-hmm. right? That if you look at the airwaves, and actually I should include that in my talk if I give it again. If you look at the airwaves and natural resources, they are considered to be property. You know, that the television licenses are granted and tax dollars are taken. Mm-hmm. from broadcasters because there's an acknowledgement that the airwaves belong to the public. They, mm-hmm. they don't belong to me because I invented radi- you common, know, radio transmission. Common, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a common resource. And my argument right. is, in fact, that that data similarly is a natural resource, but we're not thinking about it that mm-hmm. way. And so subsequently, you have essentially, if you can think of it as robber barons, that are out there exploiting the data in order to make vast fortunes and empires um, without recognition that, in fact, it's something we collectively have created and therefore should own some part of. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, if, if that's the deal, I want to know what the exchange is. Is it just that I get to use Facebook for free or is, is there something broader? And, mm-hmm. you know, if it's something that belongs to all of us that's so valuable, how can we make it do good for us? What are, you know, taxes buy us civilization? Mm-hmm. What do the advertising dollars from Facebook buy us? the right to buy more things, you mm-hmm. know. So there's a collective public good, I think, that we're not even thinking about either. That's a good conclusion. 